I want to thank Craig Walker and Arthur Lee uh, and the NCVH crew and team for inviting me this year to give this talk. I'm going to talk about below ankle interventions and pedal loop interventional techniques. These are my disclosures. So when we deal with CLI, these are the types of patients you see. This is a typical week for me, uh, and these are pre and post images of patients I've treated who, who had CLI. And obviously, we all want to achieve this. And most of us are pretty good at treating tibial disease at this point and, and recanalizing them and, and really optimizing results. But what about a patient like this who has bad outflow? The last outflow of their leg is compromised. What do you do in these cases? Well, you have to really understand the anatomy if you're going to treat these types of patients. When you think of pedal plantar loop anatomy, I want to point out a significant landmark. When you're looking fluoroscopically, you really want to look between the bases of the first and second metatarsal. When you think of the pedal plantar loop, obviously we're talking about the anterior tibial artery continuing into the dorsalis pedis, and at the base of the first and second metatarsal, that's the first turn into the deep perforating artery, which then comes back to the lateral plantar artery and then back to the posterior tibial artery. So that's your pedal plantar loop. But this first inner space between the bases of the first and second metatarsals is a good fluoroscopic um, landmark to make note of when you do pedal plantar or, uh, or pedal interventions. So what's the best way to image the foot vessels? Well, this is a great article from Dr. Manzi and his crew um, from Radiographics in 2011. And what you can see, it basically looks like a foot x-ray. You're optimizing the II to look at the foot in parallel, and you want to make sure that all the toes are separated and open. And again, you want to look at this first space here between the first and second metatarsal. That is your landmark in terms of where the first turn from the dorsalis pedis to the deep perforating artery is going to happen. And then at the base of the third metatarsal, maybe the fourth, is when you'll get your next turn into the lateral plantar artery to complete the pedal plantar loop like that. So when you're imaging uh, the foot vessels in the lateral view, you really want to get a lateral foot x-ray. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to profile the base of the fifth metatarsal. And you typically, if you draw a line like this, you want this line to intersect the base of the fifth. And the reason for that is because it basically opens up or splays the medial lateral plantar arteries so that you get a good view or look at the pedal plantar loop. And so that gives you, uh, that helps you optimize your imaging. So what does it look like angiographically? Here's a, a couple of uh, angiograms from a normal patient who had really no abnormality in their pedal plantar loop. And you can see again at the base of the first and second metatarsal, here's the dorsalis pedis artery making its first turn into the deep perforating artery. And then near the base of the third of the fourth here, it's making its next turn into the lateral plantar artery. And because we have an optimized lateral foot x-ray with the base of the fifth metatarsal down here as you draw a line through this the um, at the base of the metatarsals down you want that to intersect the base of the fifth metatarsal so that it opens up this bifurcation of the common plantar artery but remember despite that being a normal angiogram there are variations and you have to understand that when you're dealing with pedal uh, below ankle interventions, you're going to be dealing with variations. And most of these vessels are occluded or stenotic, and so things may not look normal. And so sometimes figuring this out is not the easiest thing to do. So what do you do in terms of angiography? Yeah. This is kind of the way I like to do it. There's obviously different ways. I typically like to get anagrade access. I put a six French sheath as distal as possible, ideally in the below knee or uh, segment of the popliteal artery or maybe even at the knee joint, and really perform a high quality angiogram, including AP and lateral views, because this really allows you to optimize your filling of collaterals and the native blood vessels that are there, allows you to optimally assess uh, cat morphology, collaterals, and distal targets, and it really helps to determine your access sites and treatment. And if you do proper angiography, hopefully you'll achieve uh, angiograms like this. This is a, a case of mine. You can see I did an AP and lateral foot, and it really shows you kind of what's going on. Here's your lateral plantar artery here that just kind of dies out. So you can see that this gives me an idea that I'm going to have to tackle this posterior tibial, common plantar, and then try to complete the loop. Uh -huh.